Hello, and welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary for Thursday, June the 2nd. My name is Eric Wilkinson. Some of you may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business, or even the Wall Street Journal, where I've commented on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. Please keep in mind that everything that we talk about in these daily market commentaries is not a solicitation to buy or sell any of these securities or strategies. At the end of the day, I'm here to teach you some different strategies that you can implement into your own portfolios, but please do that in your own way. The reason why I can't give you a recommendation on a particular stock or strategy is because I don't know your risk parameters. I don't know what's in your portfolios. Therefore, what I'm doing could be counterintuitive to what you are already doing. Having that out of the way, let's get this on. Some economic data coming out today. Uh, we had ADP non-farm payrolls, which is a precursor to the non-farm payrolls number that we will see tomorrow. Tomorrow's number is uh, more respected and more widely looked at than the ADP number that we got today, which came in line with expectation at 173,000 uh, versus 174,000. We also have Fed member Powell speaking uh, today. Uh, he's actually probably speaking right now. I haven't seen any real headlines or market moving headlines, I should say, on that regard. On to a couple of things like crude oil inventories right here, forward slash CL. We had uh, crude oil inventories come out with uh, a drawdown of 1.4 million barrels. It was expected a drawdown of 2.7 million, million barrels. So that is somewhat bearish for crude oil, despite the fact that it is up 18 cents today and up into the 49 handle. Uh, this is the EIA uh, numbers for the crude oil and the EIA natural gas numbers came in at 82 billion cubic feet, uh, was expected 83 billion cubic feet. So pretty much in line with expectations there. We're continuing to see this build in crude oil where the, the inventories are basically up capacity. Uh, that is not really uh, scaring off the bulls in crude oil. As you can see, they're up 18 cents on the day and testing the value area high. Uh, anyway, on to the NASDAQ forward slash NQ, as you can see, is down 16 and a half points. Overall economic negative probably not really affecting this. Could be, uh, we could just see some uh, longs start to cover here heading into tomorrow's big non-farm payroll number, uh, just basically shoring up some positions. And I still consider this being the area we are going to continue to trade for, uh, you know, some time here. We're going to fill that, that little lull in the two nodes relatively shortly. As you can see here, NAS, uh, onto the E-mini S&P is down almost five points on the day, but well off their lows, uh, basically have taken back 50% of the losses that we were seeing today, but it came down and tested this value area and uh, kind of popped back off of it uh, this just recently in the last couple hours, basically. But as you can see, basically overnight, uh, the market tried to push higher and then sold off heading into the open of the equities. And we really pretty much just started rallying off of those lows after, uh, after the open. This is the 15 minute chart of the E-mini S&Ps. Onto a couple trades that I've done. This was a earnings play that I did with Joy Global. They are uh, in the mining sector. I just felt, felt with gold starting to push higher that these guys were going to be able to do rather well with that, despite the fact that we're seeing uh, more of uh, slowing uh, globally. But this this seemed to be a, a, a good time to uh, take a long position in this. And I went into the July just because there wasn't a whole lot of premium uh, in the June uh, option cycle. So I went into the July and sold the 13 puts for 31 cents and bought them back this morning for 16 cents. So that is the beauty in having the volatility crush right after those uh, binary events. That I just love that because 50% of your net pro or max profit in one day is a nice triple, if you will. Not quite a home run, because I consider that going to zero, but a nice triple nonetheless. On to a trade that I covered. I covered this, I uh, opened this back in uh, May, about May 17th, I think. Uh, and 
it, it worked out pretty well because it's pretty much uh, gone nowhere for the most part. And in uh, General Mills, which is ticker symbol GIS, I did the June 67 and a half calls. Originally sold them for around 32 cents, I think it was. Uh, oh, sorry, 36 cents and bought them back for five cents uh, today. Took well over my 50% of my max profit. But uh, with this, you know, I sold the 67 and a half calls well back in uh, June. I think it was like right around June 17th. So right around the highs or right when we started coming off. And uh, it immediately became a winner and didn't look like it was going to come back very much. So I decided to uh, uh, cover it or let it ride for a little bit. And then when I could cover it for five cents, you don't have to pay commissions on it. And I figured that's probably as good as you're going to get on that trade. Uh, then on to Yahoo, this is back into Yahoo again. Uh, I had just took off my uh, iron condor a couple of days ago and decided to get back in there. It's just trending so sideways. They, they aren't really doing anything earth shattering. So I figured that it, it could still look like it's going to trend sideways. It's slightly below my uh, rule of being at 50% of IV but the, or above a 50 IV percent, I should say. And, but it's right there around 48. So there's almost nothing that I can trade that's in that uh, parameter of being above an IV percent of 50. So I decided to go ahead and bend that rule a little bit with Yahoo and went into the July and sold the 3341 strangle for $1.33. So Hopefully we continue to see Yahoo just trade sideways and uh, have nothing really shake that market up because that is a naked strategy. I'd like to see that uh, volatility come out of there and be able to collect 50% of my max profit rather quickly. But, you know, that's um, the wish of everyone, right? Uh, anyway, on to tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to be having a webinar and it's going to be on put diagonals. Last week we did one on call diagonals which is a little bit more difficult to build out than the put diagonals because puts have a tendency to carry more premium. It is the fear indicator, if you will, and uh, it's a little bit easier to build the strategy or to find uh, more opportunities to put this strategy in your portfolio. So go to ProTraderStrategies.com and sign up for that. And if you can't take that, take it easy.